Exodus chapter 28 and verses 31 to 35 today. Let's read out. You shall make the robe of the ephod all of blue. There shall be an opening at its top in the middle of it. Around its opening there shall be a binding of woven work like the opening of a coat of mail so that it will not be torn. You shall make on its hem pomegranates of blue and purple and scarlet material all around its hem and the bells of gold between them all around. A golden bell and a pomegranate, a golden bell and a pomegranate all around the hem on the hem of the robe. It shall be on Aaron when he ministers and its tinkling shall be heard when he enters and leaves the holy place before the Lord so that he will not die. Interesting bits. So what do we know about? So the high priest has his different bits and the ephod there and one part is worn over the other part, but he still wears that and he still wears the ephod. We notice here this ephod is made of blue wool, so he's dressed in blue. Uh, that's a piece of it all, the totality. Did you notice the bells and the pomegranates? Pomegranate was a very appreciated fruit there. and uh, But then we have the bells and the bells around its hem. By the way, how many bells go around the hem? Find it in the Bible. It won't tell you. The Bible doesn't tell us how many bells. How many pomegranates? How many bells? And well, you know that it's an alternating pattern. Bell, pomegranate, bell, pomegranate, bell, pomegranate. But how many exactly, how big were they? How many were there hanging at the bottom of that garment? We're not shown that, but there were bells. And then the most interesting piece to me here in our reading was, uh, let me get it again. It shall be 35 on Aaron when he ministers, and its tinkling shall be heard when? When he enters and leaves the holy place before the Lord so that he will not die. So you think, well, you know, in the, in the curtains were open, people could look, if they brought their animal, they could actually look across the way and they could look into the holy place. The high priest never went into the, he went into the most holy place once a year. But what's interesting here is that um, he's wearing this gear when he goes into just simply the holy place. And remember, the holy place and the most holy, that's representing, that's the tabernacle, the sanctuary itself, the building structure itself. That is God's house. And it says here that he has to have the bells on so that he doesn't die when he enters the holy place. The holy place is so holy that, that even the high priest must wear bells before he enters the holy place. Now, what it's, we're thinking that uh, whenever the other priests that ministered, ministered, because it wasn't just the high priest, but he had his other ministers, he would lead them in when they went into the holy place. They would go in with him. He led the way because he had the bells on. And, you know, this is like, you know, it would be death if you entered God's presence uh, without letting you know you're coming. That's why the bells are there. The bells are so that God knows that somebody's coming into his house. Uh, he already would know, but, but this is, again, indicating respect, carefulness, reverence. And so even the high priest, as he enters God's house, has to have the bells on lest he die as he crossed the threshold into the holy place. So we don't have this, we don't, you know, friends, you and I, we don't understand how holy God is. We don't understand how, how dark and bitter and absolutely awful sin is. And so by these garments and the bells on the garments, so that as he crosses into the holy place, mind you, this is one more help to us to understand how severe is the sin problem? How great is the grace and mercy of God that he would take away our sin through his high priestly ministrations? Uh, and of course, Jesus, as I've said before, is our great, being our great high priest, ultimately. So, some bits here in Exodus 28, ending of verse 35. Tomorrow morning, we'll carry on with verse 36. How about that? See you then.